How can I say silence without breaking it? An impossible task. Yet silence has its own quality. The stretched tautness of a vibrationless eardrum felt as pressure, as absence. Besides, it's not really silent here, but simply very quiet. Our modern life-adjusted hearing, experiencing the relatively noiseless atmosphere and providing the word silence. Perhaps the stargazing scientists know better with their understanding of vacuums and vibrations. I am Kielder, the not quite silent, but the so very quiet. From the hilltop, a query radiates out of a room, the observatory speaking a question into space. How? How? Which is a surface level word for why? why? Finely tuning their telescopes to listen deeper into the night sky, through the atmosphere and beyond the solar system. The observatory waits for answers, written in the light sent from dying stars. For a long time, silence. And then, in an instant, a reply. Later, understanding. Our feet sink silently into heather, which springs back gently like we were never there. It giggles at the game of seemingly staying the same. From the peak of Deadwater Fell, the radar tower waves continuously at all around it, as if it is desperate for a conversation. It breathes heavily, gasping in its invisible insistence, suffocating the electromagnetic spectrum so the people below cannot speak on their phones. Tempting to believe that it looks down on us, but really it is looking up to the sky and the strange birds that fly in it. Here, we make the river hold its breath, taking a big gulp in, puffing out its cheeks. I'll just chill here then, the water thinks as it slows. But it's not alone. Hello, Moon. The edges of its reservoir form slosh to and fro, wriggling around the creatures that live inside it. My body was created by science. But now fish swim freely through me. And it tickles. A trickle of water is allowed to escape its pursed lips, rushing through the pipes, shouting, Freedom! rushing away to who knows where. We speak with the voice of a million beings, a chorus growing from sapling to timber, the sharp breath as our roots are shoved into soil, a slow, gentle hum as we grow through the decades, the buzz of a chainsaw as we are cut and we fall, we are all young, none of us wise as our elders are, though the form we take belies it. You want to see history in us, a link to some ancient past as if we have witnessed you growing up through the ages, but the rings of our trunks tell a short dendrochronology. You are older than us on this land. We are a factory of trees, cycling from season to season. An industrial plantation, a recreation of the wild as forests go. We are a clumsy child, a crescendo of leaves reaches for the sky before the falling drum beat trunk on earth. The dead notes of silence return to the clearing. Nobody is ever really stuck. 
It is your nature to be free. The moon whispers across space, gently pulling the reservoir to its edges and back. In turn, the water nips at our fingers semi-playfully, leaving a cool residue. I will bite if you let me. Both telescopes and trees collect light, giving back to us life. As the video zooms out to show a cosmic web of galaxies, my neurons run in an electric hum of thought. The video ends. Darkness. From the side of the room, a voice. In the beginning was nothing. The man is silhouetted by the light of the projector, hitting a screen showing us a representation of void. I think back to visiting the source of the Tyne, marked by an obelisk and surrounded by sheep, over the border of England in another country, and how, standing there earlier, that didn't seem to mean anything. We are drawn to definition, boundaries and beginnings. This was the universe microseconds into its existence. At its origin, the river is silent, holding its breath, gathering energy for a downhill ride to its mouth. By now, all the natural elements are present. And I recall that fantastical seeming everyday fact. Everything we're formed of was forged in the hearts of stars. The river pauses and pools nearby in a human-made reservoir. Someone asks a question about dark matter, dark energy, and I wonder what unseen forces determine what happens around Kielda. The orbit of people around this lake, this forest, this place, spinning out into villages, into pubs, into houses we make homes. Each an interdependent particle affecting the whole system. The unseen falling of a tree, a butterfly effect network rippling out. The man's face is lit by the light of uncountable galaxies. We know the universe is expanding, but we don't know how it will end.